This is an exciting day for all of us, kicking off the campaign for the Hearing Restoration Project, or HRP. Uh, we showed a lot of the highlights in the hour previously. Now we want to go backwards a little bit and look at some of the basic elements of hearing, hearing diseases, and research that's being generated to overcome them. So hearing loss is the third most common disability, and most people who have hearing loss have it because they're getting older. And 10% of the population is affected, but up into the 70th, 80th, 90th decades, uh, the majority of people have hearing loss. And as a matter of fact, it's almost impossible to find someone who is 100 years old with perfectly normal hearing. So that's the bad news. Um, other bad news is there are <coughs> a lot of factors that uh, make our hearing worse, such as noise, drugs you've heard about, genetics, smoking, vascular disease, diabetes, all have an impact on hearing. Helen Keller was both deaf and blind, and she pointed out that hearing loss separates you from people, vision loss just separates you from things. For some reason, there is a social stigma from hearing loss, and I think it's because uh, if you can't hear, you can't have a conversation, and people say, what's your problem? Interestingly, the NIH research budget for vision is six times the budget for hearing loss, and that's one major factor that's led the Hearing Health Foundation to uh, talk about the benevolence and generosity of the citizens of the country to help support this endeavor. Now, the ear listens to the sounds, but it's the brain that hears them and interprets them. There are four elements of the uh, auditory system, the outer ear, which gathers the sound, the middle ear, which conducts the sound, the inner ear, which transforms sound waves into electrical impulses, and then the central pathways or the brain that interprets the sound. Now, hearing relies on sound waves. And here you see a tuning fork compressing in the air particles that are carried to our ear. Whoops, going the wrong way. So a couple of terms, loudness, how intense is the sound, is based on the dB scale or decibel. And the pitch of a sound, whether it's high or low, is in cycles per second, also known as hertz. So the top note on a piano is 4,000 cycles. And my voice is in the 250 cycle range. So looking at an audiogram, here we have the frequency across the top. There's 4,000 cycles. And the intensity going down this way, so a jet airplane if you're up close to one, is at least 120 decibels, whereas the rustle of the leaves on the trees is in the order of zero to five decibels. Note that certain consonant sounds like th and f and s are all in the high frequency range. So when we lose high frequency hearing, as we all are going to do, those sounds are lost unless we have amplification. The clinical audiogram shows normal hearing at zero dB. And then with age, it falls off in the higher frequencies. As 25 dB is the cutoff for normality, and 40 dB is the cutoff for when you have to get amplification or some help. This is a cartoon that illustrates, did he say, Someday we'll be sorry, or Sunday we'll be sorry. It's those kinds of transpositions of sound that affect our ability to hear. And if you show up on someday uh, waiting for this to happen and it was last Sunday, you're in trouble. So the ear canal gathers the sound, the eardrum and the bones send it to the inner ear and the inner ear sends it to the nerve and on to the brain. Let's look at that in a little bit more detail. 
the ear has the hearing part of the cochlea and the balance part, which are the semicircular canals and these funny things called the utricle and saccule. Now the sound waves going down the ear um, have a peak where they vibrate and resonate. And so a 60 cycle sound is almost at the tip of the mechanism. 300 is down a little bit more and 2000 is near the middle ear side of this. This is the standing wave of sound in the inner ear. And I don't know how this got in backwards, upside down and it's not usable without it, sorry. Oh, it's a glitch. <clears throat> now you've heard a lot about the hair cells and I wanna spend a few minutes talking about what hair cells are. There are two types, the outer ones that are little muscles that vibrate when the sound comes in your ear and thereby amplify it. And then the inner hair cells which are the sensory cells that take the vibration and turn them into nerve energy. So here we see a cross section of the organ of corti, as this is called, and these are three outer hair cells and one inner hair cell. Notice the inner hair cell has all the nerve fibers. So if, if you miss these cells, you have a 60 decibel hearing loss, but you can still benefit from amplification. If you lose the inner hair cells, well, the game's up because this is the primary sensor of the sound waves that come into your ear. You've also heard about supporting cells and you'll hear a lot more about supporting cells. Here's some Deiter cells, Claudia cells, Henson's, um, inner pillar, outer pillar. This is where regeneration occurs. And I think the research in the next few years is going to be on the support cells and how do they change and become hair cells. Here you see an electron micrograph of the tops of the hair cells and notice these support cells that form an intricate mosaic and the inner hair cells um, Now, <clears throat> with motion, here's the, back, the membrane, as it moves up, it bends the hair cells. And at the very tips of the hair cells are little openings, and when the, they open up with mechanical displacement, the potassium ions enter the cell and trigger a nerve response. Here is a... Uh, electron microscopy of the, uh, one of the hairs with the little tip links. Here you can see it here. And this is an incredibly complicated and uh, rigorous mosaic of cells that allow us to hear. I mentioned as we get older, the um, hearing goes down the scale. It gets worse, more in the high frequencies than in the low frequencies, more for men than in women. Now, I mentioned earlier that the, uh, <clears throat> the ears listen, but the brain hears. And there are the primary auditory cortex, which detects sound, and then the associated areas that give it meaning. And brain processing is just as an important part of age-related hearing loss as is loss of function of the inner ear. And the big problem here is hearing in noise. So here we see a very busy diagram with the hair cells, the nerve fibers, half of them stay on one side, half of them cross over, and they are represented in the primary auditory cortex on each side of the brain. So even though the sound goes in one ear, you hear it with both sides of the brain. And the brain is organized musically, as you see the color coding for the various parts, in the temporal lobe of the brain. But the richness of hearing comes from the association areas. And so if this is the primary auditory cortex, look at the associations with other parts of the brain. 
So if I say the word elephant, you immediately get a picture of a great big mouse with a long trunk. Uh, but the sounds of the word also lead you to the meaning of the word. So hearing is clearly our most complex science, our, uh, sense, and this is the reason we are here today. So in summary, the ear listens, the brain hears. Loss of hair cells is the key cause of hearing loss. And our strategy for restoring hearing comes from regeneration. And our current research effort is aimed at regrowing or restoring the missing cells in the ear. The good news is we have more scientists working in this area than in the history of the world. And the efforts that have been put forth, particularly with the support of the uh, Hearing uh, Health Foundation, are going to come forth with uh, discoveries over the next five to 10 years that will change the way we think about hearing and the way we think about correction of hearing loss. So with that overview, we now have a videotape to show you that will be on our website. It is made by Professor Rémi Pujol in Montpellier, France, and with Dr. Ed Rubel, who you saw earlier. So I'd like to go ahead and show this video, and then we'll get on with the rest of our program. What do we hear? What is hearing? How do our ears work? And why are hair cells so important and what happens if we lose them? We hear sounds, vibrations that spread in air or water and stimulate our ears. Hearing is the result of the collaboration between the ear and the auditory brain. An ear without a brain is like an unplugged microphone but without ears, we would not even be able to imagine what a sound was like. Once captured by our external ear, the vibrations cause the movement of the eardrum. Sound is amplified by the middle ear and transferred to the inner ear, or cochlea, which transforms the sound vibrations into a neural signal. The auditory nerve feeds this coded message, which contains all of the sound's attributes, to the brain, where different structures work together to create the perception, I can hear. When awake, the process of hearing involves three different brain levels. A reflex level, where the arrival of a message may cause us to jump or turn our head, the auditory cortex, where the sound is perceived, and other brain areas, which allow the perception to become conscious, recognize the sound by comparing it to those that have previously been memorized, and determine an appropriate voluntary response. When asleep, our ears and auditory pathways are still working and reflexes can still occur but the other brain regions involved in emotions, motivations, memory, etc. are inactive. There are therefore no voluntary responses or conscious perception. The ear is composed of three parts, the external, middle, and inner ear. The ear canal is closed off by the tympanic membrane or eardrum. In the middle ear, the eardrum is mechanically linked by the ossicular chain to another membrane, which closes the inner ear. The hearing part of the inner ear is rolled up into a spiral called the cochlea. Sound waves are cut by the external ear and pass down the ear canal until they reach the eardrum and make it vibrate. The ossicular chain then mechanically transmit the vibrations to the liquid of the cochlea. Inside the cochlea are hair cells, which translate sound vibrations into neural signals. By zooming in on a transverse section of the cochlea, we can see the organ of corti which contains the sensory hair cells, and one single hair cell in its connection with the auditory nerve. After the sound has been translated by the hair cell, neural signals are sent to the brain through the auditory nerve. Why are hair cells so important? Providing that they have developed normally, our cochlea only contains 15,000 hair cells, and these cells do not regenerate. We can clearly see the hair cells. They are being bent by the sound vibrations which cause the hair cells to become excited and create a neural signal. Providing that the sound transmission is not altered and the brain works normally, our hearing is fine. In normal hair cells, we can perfectly discriminate the frequencies of sound on the musical scale. 
what happens when hair cells degenerate? In this image, outer 